From here, the real civilization has begun. From more than 5,000 years, millions of ancient Egyptians have worked hardly to build this great pyramid. Millions of stories have happened here. Love stories, battles, wars, every children will, were playing this stone, broken stone, is priceless. We invite you all to visit Egypt and we will leave you now one hour to see what our grand, great-grandfathers has done. In the heart of Cairo, the
But the fact remains that he was a pharaoh that believed in modern theism and for that respect he founded a new city in the Middle Egypt to be fit for that mission. Scientists removing his mummy from its tomb in almost 80 years, the goal is to use state-of-the-art CAT scan technology to solve the mystery surrounding his life and death. But what gave such a boy king this great fame? In 1891, a British man called Howard Carter came to Egypt
artifacts from the Old Kingdom found at Giza and collection of late period monuments found at Bahreya. Having walked around in Egypt Museum from the first pharaoh until the end of the Egyptian rule, one has not only passed 150,000 objects, but also a
and the other two pyramids have never been found before in any uh, old Kenyan site. But we believe that the workers who, or the village of the workers who built the, the, the pyramids at Giza has been down the valley here in this area. They lived down this area and they uh, transported the whole stone, the stones to the plateau here. Uh, evidence about our excavation that we did here uh, this year, we found some evidence of how those people were left. And we, did, we are going to continue our excavation uh, for this coming 10 years to try to find if there are some stones in this area we'll know what kind of tools that the workers built the pyramids. We'll try also to find some wheat seeds. We'll know what kind of food they ate in that time. As well as when we finish the whole excavations of the site down there, and we'll know how many houses there, then we can really find out how many people actually built the uh, pyramids. And this excavation is very unique because this is the first time to find out of the ordinary Egyptians who built the royal uh, building of the pyramid. Uh, if someone would come by to the Giza Plateau and try to find out how the pyramid was built, what he has to do, he has to find where is the ramp and also has to find the location of the quarry. First of all, if you go to the east side of the Great Pyramid, and think that the ancient Egyptian built the ramp from down the Sphinx up to the Great Pyramid, this is can never have been happened. Before the ancient Egyptian built the tombs to the east side in year 12 from the reign of King Cheops, means they will not really build a ramp there. If you go to the, the, the north side of the Great Pyramid, there is no quarries there. If you go to the west side of the Great Pyramid, you also will know that the tombs were built in year 5 from the reign of King Cheops. The only site outside of the Great Pyramid in the time of Cheops was empty of anything in that time is the southern side because the two, the two boats were built uh, after the death of the king and this type of tombs here also were built by King Kafra or Kefren, the builder of the second pyramid at Giza. Then for topographical reasons, the ancient Egyptian left the southern side completely free of anything because the quarries of all the stones of the Great Pyramid, the ancient Egyptian took it from this side here, east of the Second Pyramid. Then they made the ramp from the quarries here up to the pyramid. And after that, they made some ramps around the pyramid. But we found also a very interesting architecture feature around the pyramid. And this can be seen around the four sides of the Second Pyramid. We found some holes in the four sides which will prove that this is the grid that the ancient Egyptian made to make the base completely perfect. If you try to build a house or to build anything, you have to make a base. Then you do the base with some uh, technical equipment. But the ancient Egyptian equipment was making this hole to make the base. After they made the base, they dug in the solid rock until they made the base of the Great Pyramid or the Second Pyramid to be around 27 feet high, completely solid rock. And after that, they cut the stones from the quarries. They make one ramp at the beginning. And after that, they make some ramps around the pyramid. All the stones came from the Giza Plateau because the reason that the king pick up a site because it's full of limestone. After they finished building the pyramid from the plateau itself, they brought stones to case the whole face of the pyramid from a side to the east of the Great Pyramid called Torah. hunting in the desert, 
fishing in the area of the delta and the pilgrimage to Abydos. Akhenaten erected one of his 14 rock-cut boundary stella. They mark the boundaries of his new-built city of Akhet-Aten. These boundary markers were erected on both sides of the Nile. He had decided never to leave his new city. He is shown with his wife adoring the rays of the sun. This stella goes back to the sixth year of the reign of King Akhenaten. Laksa Museum of Ancient Egyptian Art was opened in 1970.
The scenes depict the labors of Egyptian workmen associated with the temple workshops, storehouses, and brewery. One can see many fascinating details, such as two geese eating grain and a seated peasant forcibly feeding a calf. This is a successful attempt to reconstruct a complete scene from 283 painted sandstone blocks found at Karnak. Offering the figures of God Ammon, his consort Mut, and their son Honsu as a gift to the Theban triad. King Amenhotep III wearing the double crown with the royal headdress, the cobra on his forehead, and the ceremonial beard holding the statue of God Ammon the Lord of Thebes. Four Shawapti figures of Totanchamon, one wearing the royal headdress and holding in his hand the crook and flail, another one crowned with the blue crown and Urius, holding the insignia of Osiris. 413 Shawaptis were found in his tomb, representing a true image of the young king. At Luxor Temple, near the western row of columns of the great court erected by Amenhotep III, some 26 wonderful statues were discovered in early 1989. This unique collection has enriched Luxor Museum and was exhibited in a special wing. Sphinx of King Tatranch Amon, this type of statues shows the strength, grandeur, and wisdom of the monarch. The word Sphinx was derived from the ancient Egyptian Shesep Ankh, the living statue. 
King Amenhotep III, seated beside the falcon Horus, god of the sky, and dynastic divinity. The king wears a headdress, the Urius at his brow, and the double crown. He holds the scepter in his right hand, embracing the falcon god with his left. The falcon god Horus wears the double crown and embraces the king. For the king, according to the ancient Egyptian religion, is the representative of Horus on earth. A black granite statue of god Amon Ra. Mut-F, in the shape of a cobra, discovered in Luxor temple finds. The time is of King Taharka. King Horemhab, kneeling in front of God Atom, who is seated on his throne, decorated with reliefs, symbolizes the union of the two lands. God Atom wears the double crown. King Amunhotep is kneeling, holding two jars in his hands as an offering to the god. The king wears the royal headdress with pleated lappets and the cobra at his brow. God Ammon seated, protecting King Horin Hab. The king wears the royal headdress with the cobra on his forehead, holding the crook scepter. God Ammon represented with two tall plumes over his head, protecting the king. Another seated statue of God Ammon, protecting the sovereign. Hathor, goddess of love, life and maternity. On her head, she wears her characteristic emblem, the solar disk between horns of a cow. The sculpture shows her beautiful feminine features and face, the time of Amenhotep III. This polished sculpture of goddess Ionit is an example of the excellence of the ancient craftsman art, showing the goddess in her tightly fitted dress, holding the symbol of life in her hand time of Amenhotep III. King Amenhotep III, standing upright, clothed in a richly decorated kilt, tied with long stripes around his waist. His body is youthful and athletic. The torso is delicately modeled. The face is radiant under the double crown, which is surmounted by the Urius, a masterwork at a time of lavish wealth and brilliant craftsmanship. Two seated statues representing God Ammon, Lord of the Gods, and his consort, Goddess Mut. 
her beautiful face is framed by her famous wig. This exquisitely modeled feminine figure bears witness to the high skill of the artist. Time of Ramses II. A sphinx of Thutmose III. The king wears a striped headcloth protected by the ureus and the false beard attached to the chin. A headless statue of marble representing King Ramses II. Titles and names of the king are inscribed in sunk relief filled with blue pigment. The statue depicts him kneeling and holding before him a tall stand.
of the temple, one of the offering rooms was used as a church by early Christians. Some scenes of saints can still be seen. side rooms where Aminhotep III recorded the story of divine